What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be briefly taking a look at the all satisfy function where you can figure out if all the elements in a sequence, aka a array, satisfy whatever conditions you want to meet. It's pretty commonly applicable to a lot of scenarios and we oftentimes write janky for loops to figure out if things are valid or not. So without further ado, drop a like down below, hit the subscribe button while you're at it, and let's jump in. So we're going to be using a playground to go through this since it's fairly straightforward. So let's go ahead and open up Xcode. I'm going to go to File, New, Create a Playground, and we can stick with the blank playground as soon as Xcode decides to load. And let's go ahead and call this All Satisfy, just like that. And let me also go ahead and expand my window here. Now, generally speaking, when you have an array of elements and you want to verify that all of them meet a condition, uh, it's easy to do that with a for loop. You can alternatively also filter out the elements that you know don't meet your condition. But what if you want to verify that all the elements meet a particular condition before proceeding? So in other words, let's say we have a uh, array of numbers and I'm just going to stick in a bunch of random numbers in here and let's see if we wanted to know if all the numbers in here were in fact even. We can go ahead and say all even and what I want to go ahead and do here is say numbers and we're going to say all, whoops, let's go back here and we're going to go ahead and say all satisfy and you're going to get the uh, completion here, the autocomplete. And if we take a look at the description before going ahead and implementing it, it returns a Boolean value indicating whether every single element of this sequence satisfy given predicates, which is a fancy way of saying verify that it meets a condition, it being each uh, element. So we're going to do a closure in here, like so, very similar to compact map or map. We're going to say, in our case, $0. Uh, percent two equals equals zero. Basically, we're using the modulo operator here and seeing if two evenly goes into whatever every element is. This way, we're going to figure out if it's even or not. And if it is, in fact, even, uh, we're going to get a Boolean back. So here we have all even, which is going to give us a Boolean. So let's go ahead and simply print this out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command Shift Y to open up our console down here. Go ahead and hit that play button to get the printout. And we should get false. So we definitely have odd numbers in our array. So we do, in fact, see false. Now let's go ahead and make this a little more interesting. So numbers are nice and well. Let's go ahead and figure out uh, string length. So let's say we have something along the lines of a Google Forms style app. And we want to make sure that the answer that the user has entered for all of the fields we provide are at least a minimum length. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a couple of things here. So we'll say some company names. We'll go with Apple, Google, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, etc. And let's say we want to verify that every single element in this collection of answers uh, has a length that is greater than perhaps five. So we can say $0.count is greater than or equal to five. And uh, in this case, let's actually go ahead and copy and paste that down below so we can see this example and leave that one there. So I'm going to say length valid. We'll go ahead and toss that there. And this we're going to go ahead and update to answers. And this $0, we're going to go ahead and say that the count is greater than or equal to 5. So again, fairly straightforward example. We're going to build on this and get a little more interesting. But if we go ahead and give it a run, we should see true. Because every single string in here has at least 5 characters or more. So that makes sense. Now, where this gets interesting is when you have complex uh, collections with your own model objects, albeit structs or classes, and if you want to verify that they all match some type of value. So let's say you have a messaging app, and a lot of messaging apps allow you to multi-select the messages and delete them all. So let's say we have a struct called a message, and I'm going to actually put this down here. Let's put this at the bottom. So we're going to have a message in here, and a message presumably has some text on it, and then it also has a uh, Boolean. In our case, we're going to go ahead and make it a constant, and this is going to be uh, flagged for 
deletion and it's going to be a boolean so let's say we want to verify in some type of function that's going to delete messages that all the messages being passed in are in fact flagged for deletion so let's go ahead and create a bunch of these messages so i'm going to go ahead and say messages and we're going to be a little fancy here and i'm going to go ahead and say an array zero to let's say a hundred we're going to go ahead and map this Let's go ahead and map this. And from this, I'm gonna go ahead and create a message model. So we're gonna end up with 100 message models where the string is gonna just be the number and the flagged for deletion is going to be true. So this is gonna spit out a collection of a bunch of messages. Now we're gonna say can delete, and this is going to be messages all that satisfy the fact that each of these messages is flagged for deletion. And of course, in this case, we've hard coded true, so it is going to in fact return true. So we can say now, if can delete, we're gonna go ahead and simply print out time to delete. And in the else case, we're gonna go ahead and print out here, whoops, can't delete. Now, obviously this is going to go into the if block because we've hard coded true. We're gonna tweak that momentarily to make sure that our else is called. But the point of this, uh, this pattern is the fact that you can avoid a for loop uh, and verify each of these elements. Now, if you wanted to, to filter out everything that didn't match, you can use a filter function as well in place of all satisfy. You can in fact literally change it in line, but that actually negates the point of what we're doing here, right? We're figuring out if they all are correct. So instead of hard coding this to be true, let's go ahead and say if uh, the number uh, is even, we're gonna go ahead and uh, in this case, we're going to pass in true, otherwise it's going to be false. Now, obvious, obviously in this case, all of our uh, elements that are odd is going to pass in false, which should be half of them. So we should get the uh, whoops print out here because, you know, the case isn't satisfied. Now, we've done some simple checks inside of the all satisfied block here. You are absolutely uh, you know, allowed to and encouraged to do as complicated of checks as you want in here. So maybe what we wanna go ahead and do is verify that every single message has a text that is at least four characters and it's flagged for deletion. Now, the use case is going to obviously vary based on your type of application, but my takeaway there and the point that I wanna drive home is don't, don't figure that this uh, predicate or this conditionality needs to be simple. You can get pretty wild and go pretty nuts with this. Obviously, keep your code readable and keep it nice and concise, but I digress as flexible as you need it to be. So that's actually all I've got for you guys today. Pretty sweet and short video, hopefully to the point. Very simple way to clean up your for loops and code if you ever do some uh, validation anywhere in your business logic. If you haven't dropped a like down below, don't forget to do so. Hit subscribe while you're at it. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.